we need to introduce gas turbines which are used for aircraft propulsion. Well, it's surprising how many people have flown in aircraft. Most of you have, the vast majority have. And you've probably been frightened the first time, like, uh, how is this going to get off the air, uh, you know, off the ground into the air? And you look out at the wing, wing and you see this monstrosity. Well, guess what? That's a gas turbine. That's a, it uses liquid fuel, but it's gas being compressed and then burned with the liquid fuel, the jet fuel, and then it's the gas turbine. So it's used for aircraft propulsion. Go, there's some excellent videos. This is very good video. And it just goes into the basics of jet engines for aircraft propulsion. I'm not going to show it. Strongly encourage you to go and look at it. And what do you have? You have an intake section, you have a compressor section, combustor, and the gas turbine to extract some mechanical energy out of the exhaust stream, and then you put it through an exhaust system. That's the basic components of that complex jet engine. Now, we're not going to do turbofan, turboprop, just do the basic jet engine. All right. Um, there's, most of them are turbofans. But let's not get into that. So we know how to study the compressor, the combustor, the turbine. But something's different from the stationary power plant and used for propulsion, aircraft for propulsion. The big difference is there's no big connection to electric generator. So that throws students for a loop. Uh, I just analyzed gas power cycles, the Brayton cycle. So let me do this. Let me ask some questions. What is the main purpose of the jet engine used in propulsion systems on an aircraft? How does it work? Is it internal energy? Don't, don't call it out. Momentum, kinetic energy, thrust, or energy? What, what does it do to make it work? And I'm, I should pause and walk around. Do I have enough time? Because me aspiring mechanical engineers should get this one down 100% correct. And yet when I ask it, after they've taken dynamics and some other classes, they will stumble and fumble this question. I already heard it called out correctly before. But uh, really, do we know how this thing works? It, does it generate a lot of internal energy? Is that the key? Does it generate a lot of momentum? Kinetic energy? That's the key word right there, isn't it? It's thrust. And then what, what is what is the SI units for thrust? Should I let you? Yeah, it's a force. Isn't it a force? Yeah, it's thrust is a force, and that's what the jet engine, here's the jet engine, it's attached to the wing. When that thing's firing, it's pushing like that, that's exerting a force on the bottom of the wing to move the aircraft down the runway, right? Now, the wing is pushing back, there's this equal and opposite reaction, but I'm just talking about what the engine doing strapped to the bottom of the wing, it's pushing, it's generating a thrust force, which is pushing it in the forward direction. What is a common misconception of a jet engine is that thrust is created. How does it generate this thrust, this little package strapped on the bottom of the wing? How does it generate the thrust? Well, some people say, well, it generates it by, by high exhaust pressure. Or it's generated by high exhaust temperature. Or thrust is generated by high exhaust speed. So either it's high exhaust pressure, high exhaust temperature, or high exhaust speed. Not all three. One of them is correct. Speed. It's speed. And a lot of people, what's the most common wrong answer? Pressure. pressure. It, it, it's like, well, it's got to push something. So it's high pressure over here to push it. No, 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 no. So you go back in physics. You put this air cart, this frictionless cart, and you put the little kid on the, the, the cart and you put a bucket of balls and the kid starts throwing balls that way one ball after another after another is the cart going to stay stationary or will the cart start moving start moving you're throwing balls this way the cart's moving that way 
Somebody says, I'm going to give you a bucket of ping pong balls, and you can pitch those, or basketballs, or uh, bowling balls. What do you want if you really want to move that cart a lot this way? You want to throw ping pong balls off or bowling balls? <laughs> Which one do you want to throw? Bowling balls. And why? Mass, mass, mass. Now, you want to get a little kind of dribble of the ball coming off, or do you want to throw it as hard as you can to get it to come off? You want it to come out with a huge velocity and a lot of mass. And so what's the basic equation for thrust? The forward thrust is the product of the mass flow rate that's streaming out. Get a lot. Plus times that exit velocity. Now, if you have a significant inlet velocity, it's the difference between the two. And you are sucking in on the inlet. But most of the time, you could just throw off that inlet velocity. It's the product of m dot and v. This is a critical equation. Is that your friend? Is this equation your friend? Make it your friend if it's not. And that's the basis for the jet engine. So this is what we do, is we have the compressor, the combustor, the turbine. Nothing new. But you have to sometimes slow it down in the diffuser. And this is the key right there. Do you know how nozzles work? We studied them, right? That's how nozzles work. So what you have right here is a nozzle. Is the pressure at 4 equal to the pressure 5? The pressure on the inlet to the nozzle equal to the pressure on the outlet of the nozzle? I guess that's B, isn't it? Is that true or not? No, that's not true. Which way is it? The higher the pressure feeding the nozzle, the greater the pressure change, the faster it's going to come out, isn't it? And so this is a key concept. So what happens is, is a lot of students, when they start to analyze this uh, jet engine cycle for propulsion, will think that the pressure at 4 is low, like the pressure 4 is close to the pressure 1. It's not. So what happens is the turbine generates just enough power, drops the pressure only enough to feed the compressor, and that's it, do an energy balance, OK? And then the rest of the pressure is used to really kick it through the nozzle and get it to high exit velocity. Because if you have a high exit velocity with a large M dot, you get a lot of forward thrust. That makes sense? Well, I don't have time to solve this problem. Next time we'll solve a problem. Thank you.